Hey everyone, thanks for trying to learn to play games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, me and my teammate will be playing through a brand new game coming to GameFound called Ancient Blood, The Order of the Vampire Hunters. This is a new one from Dark Gate Games. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly an hour to two hours to play, and is a fully cooperative, narratively driven campaign game. So in the game itself, you are playing an order of vampire hunters that is tasked with eliminating an elder vampire. You don't know where that elder vampire is, so that's where this narrative campaign is going to come into play, where you're going to visit all kinds of different villages they're going to lead you to different paths that will lead you to different dens all trying to find clues and progress the campaign on that journey to try to find the hidden layer of the elder vampire hopefully once you get there you'll have the equipment you need to defeat the elder vampire so in this video, me and my teammate will be playing through a sample demo scenario of this, just to kind of show you a basic idea of each one of these different types of uh, encounters you're going to run into, whether it's one of the different randomly generated villages, a one of the paths that you might run into, one of the different dens you may run into, and again, that potential elder battle. So again, this is just a demo version of it. The campaign itself would be a lot longer and will have all kinds of different branching paths and different decisions you're going to have to make that will impact it as you go on. So this is just to give you the basics to see if this is something that you might be interested in backing on GameFound. So I also have a link up in the top corner if you'd like to check out a video for an overview where I just go over the main features of the game and then show you a basic sample of each one of the different uh, turns or phases again, more or less. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribing to my channel. It's one of these ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and be able to produce this content. If you want to stay updated on all my videos, also considering that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new stuff. And I also want to point out that all the materials you see here are prototype materials and are still subject to change and look a lot better in the final production of the copy of the game. So let's head to the table and we'll see how this one plays. So the village is the first step in this process where you're going to go to the village as hunters and each village is going to be randomized. You, at the beginning of the game, there'll be a deck of cards that are gonna contain these six different locations that you'll find within a village and there'll be multiple copies of that. So you'll shuffle that up and then the scenario you're playing is going to outline how many of each building you're going to draw to create a new village each time. So every time you play, it's going to randomize the different things that are gonna show up within the village. So the village itself looks different. So this is the village. This is the village currently. And uh, like I said, there's six different types of buildings you're going to run into, houses, churches, um, black markets, uh, um, blacksmiths, and a number of other locations that you'll be able to interact with. So what do they do? So during uh, the player's turns, we're always going to start in the church. So we'll have that reveal that all of our hunters will start at that location. And each location is going to provide you with different options, such as this particular church lets us do a transfusion. Mm -hmm. And then we can also buy different things, such as garlic and um, like uh, silver and metal, uh, which will be able to be used in different ways. You can use it to construct different items and build things at the blacksmith or you might be able to sell things at locations and do a number of other things. And then each location is gonna be a little bit different. For example, during each player's turn, that player gets three actions. Uh -huh. You can use those actions to buy or sell or interact with a location. You can use them to move around town to different locations. So let's go ahead and say, for example, with Giselle here, she's gonna move over to this house. So with a movement, it's just directly to where you're Correct. going. Correct. Okay. Yeah, there's no limitations on that. So then we would reveal this location, and this is a narrative-driven location. So this is going to have different things that are going to come up. So this particular house, and each house is going to be different, or each location will be different. So this one says that you decide to enter the house. The living room is modestly uh, furnished, and it seems that nobody is at home. You suddenly hear a female voice coming from a nearby room. She tells you that entering her room means certain death. Sounds so then like it also fun. is going to reference uh, entry 1300. So then we would go to our book, uh, which uh, this is a prototype, so this is all I have, but this will be a book in the full game. And then this entry is going to tell us, uh, give us a number of different choices that we're going to have to make. And depending upon the choices that we make, other things are going to happen. There'll be consequences for that. So with this one, you have a couple of different choices that you have to make. You can, you the first choice is that you think someone may be in danger, so you go in anyway. In that situation, you would read entry one, 
or you listen to her warning. You try to find food and get out as fast as you can. If you choose that option, then you're going to read entry two. So what do you think we should do? I say we go in anyways. All right. So you open the door where a woman is lying on the bed. She's writhing in pain and terrible spasms. So from here, then, we have another choice. You can choose to get closer to her, which is going to have us read entry four, or you could try to choose to leave. It's like a which way book. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go closer. Let's go closer. Okay. Wait, is there a character? Why am I telling you what your character should be doing? Well, what can I do? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> We're working together. This is a fully cooperative game, of course. So with this one, with entry four, you realize the woman is suffering from some kind of disease, probably yellow plague. She coughs. You're dangerously close. You leap away. You rummage through your pockets, hoping to find some alfalfa. So in this one, then again, you have another choice. Do you find it or do you not find it? So that, this is going to depend on what you have in your inventory. And again, it'll go by the items that you've potentially purchased that you have in there. So if you happen to have that particular item, then you will read entry six. If you do not, you'll read entry seven. So, so what happens? Have it or not? <laughs> we just started. I know. So how do we have anything? Well, we don't yet. So that would have been a bad choice to go into that house right away without being prepared. But well, I wouldn't go fun. anywhere since I had nothing to go with. <laughs> so let's say that we don't have it. So in that situation, yellow plague is a very powerful virus. You must get two blood tokens to protect yourself from its effects, discard two blood tokens, and take two wounds, and then you continue your activation. So again, there's going to be a number of these different entries within here, and each one is going to have all kinds of different effects. Some of them might be beneficial, where you might get new equipment or new items or different uh, relics and different things that are going to help you on your journey, and others obviously are going to be more detrimental to you, where you will take damage and, and whatnot. And again, this is going to depend on the different locations that you go to. And so, and then the other big thing is with the village, just like any other particular scenario, there is going to be a clock, but there are no enemies that are in the villages. So as you go from day to night, it's not going to necessarily affect anything. When you have completed your movements within the village, then you're ready to move on to the next scenario or the next part of the scenario. And that is going to be the path. And again, those are going to have different kind of options and such. And all those are also going to have some narrative entries that are going to outline things. I'm not going to cover all of that in this, as I don't want to spoil anything that will potentially be in the base game for the future release. So we're just going to move into that next part, and I'll show you a basic thing of how a various path will work. As again, that is going. there's going to be another deck of cards that will be specific for paths. And so every one of those will be unique and different um, based on how you play as well. Okay, so the next part of this is going to be the path. So with this one, again, this is going to be randomized and there will be story elements to that as well, which will be outlined in the book that you're playing with. And with this particular one, we ran into three creatures that we're going to have to deal with with this. And we're getting close to dark, and so that is going to trigger some different effects as well. When you shift from day to nighttime, the order in which the players and the monsters activate is going to reverse. So normally, we'll choose one of our characters during the day to activate and carry out their actions. After the character completes their actions, then the enemies will activate. From there, then they'll go back to us to choose another character to activate, and then again, the enemies would activate. When we move into a night uh, round, that is going to reverse, where the enemies will activate first, and then one of our characters will get to activate. We, and then uh, the creatures this isn't going to apply to, but any vampires are also going to get a little bit stronger. Some of their stats will change, and they're going to handle things a little bit differently, So, which we'll see in the next uh, scenario in the uh, den. So wait, all of them go on their turn, like uh, all, th all, th all three of them? All, Correct. I can't speak. All <laughs> creatures. All creatures will activate. Yes. But we only get to move one, one here, here all the time? Yes. Because we're doing, our, we're doing, we get three actions versus they're only activating and resolving their effects once per enemy that's out there. I suppose that balances it. It's just harsh. Yeah, stacks against us a little bit, but that's all right. We, we're going to go first. We'll be able to maybe be able to eliminate one of them. And then, then. <laughs> Faith, my friend. All right. 
So, first off, let's go ahead and choose one of our characters to go. Um, right now, our enemies are at a range from us, so either we're going to have to move into their space, or we'll have to choose a character that has some ranged attacks. Let's see. So, what is your ranged? Uh, mine is uh, speed of three, one damage, and a green. So, yours is speed three, two damage, and a green. So, you are a little bit better at dealing damage than I am. So and this is two for him, and... Otto has one. Yeah, but he, he's not. Otto is the tank, right? Yeah, he's, he's the he's the hammer guy. He's, he's gonna the go big in there dude. And bang stuff up. Womp. So you want to go with Ellie first? I suppose I should. Okay. I don't know. So now that you've selected your character, the first thing that you're going to do during your turn is to choose the order of your special abilities. Hmm, let's so see. depending upon their orientation, you have to line them up so that they make one symbol, whether it's a diamond, a square, or a circle. And then whatever is lined up with that, you can use those abilities by spending a blood token to activate them. That basically allows you to do different things. And each one of them is specific you mean to... blood vial? Yes. Um, to different things. So, for example, with this one, this is your ranged attack. You can, so plus you can one. use that to get plus one speed to it, or you can I could use go to melee. plus one to one of your two abilities that it shows there. Uh, on the bottom sections, that will give you plus one shield for defense or plus one speed for a melee Assuming attack. Assuming I line up the two. Correct. Okay. So from I there, guess. Then once you're happy with the orientation of that, then you would move into your turn where you get to spend those three actions to carry out a variety of things. You can use them to move from one space to another. You can use them to attack an enemy, either at ranged or in melee range. I think, yeah. What's the third option? Um, you can trade with other people that are in your space, um, interact with different obstacles and different things that are out there, which currently we don't have we don't, that right. we're going to be messing with at this point. So Okay. So, let's see. Which one is the ugly dude? Which one is the hardest one? Um, these two have got the best armor. They've got two shields right off the bat. This one's going to roll a red and a, and a yellow, and that one's going to roll a red. Which one's going to hurt us the most, potentially? Um, he's the fastest, as far as the speed's concerned. Uh, both of these guys are also going to dish out good damage. Um, he's probably also the easiest to potentially defeat. As he, well, he also has a high dodge, so we are going to need something that's going to be fast. So our characters, our two male, our ranged characters are probably the best to handle him because he's got a dodge of, or he has a shield rating, which is a, the minimum With attack the speed uh, okay. rating that he needs all right. to achieve. Well, I will. Ellie will attack that creature. All right, so we're going to go after. Bodo, and he's in the middle section there. So first you would determine if you have range. So your weapon itself Three. is going to, to list the amount of uh, range it has. So it has only a range of one. So you'd have to move up first to be able to attack. And then you're going to determine line of sight by drawing a straight line from your space's symbol to his space. And as long as it doesn't cross a wall. Um, which I know he is. Side, which you don't have to worry about it because we're out in the middle of nowhere. A range of one. So I have to move him up. Yeah. So. Ellie, is that Ellie? No, Ellie's right here. Yes. So Ellie is up one. All right, so that's your first action. Second action, I will attack. All right, so Ellie's going to get a green die for her melee. All right, and he's got... And he's got two yellows. All right. Let's see. Let's see what he does. He's one. got an additional one dodge. dodge. Which gives him So that's going to give him four, four dodge symbols. He's, he gets three base, and that'll add a fourth. Now, if he would have gotten a fifth, he would have also gained a, 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 a shield as well. Yeah. So maybe I should crack a dot file. No, it won't matter. All right, let's see what happens. I need two or three. I need, I don't At this get, point, the I more damage critical. you can do, the better. All right. So you got another speed. So first off, you have to your your total speed value, which is whatever your weapon is plus whatever you roll, has to meet or exceed his uh, minimum rating. So his minimum rating is a three. So you had enough to achieve that. Right. So then we would go into resolving the attack itself. Right. So you have four speed. He has four dodge, which each dodge will cancel out one speed. Right. If there's any remaining for dodge, then it will start canceling out damage. Right. 
He has four, four dodge to your four speed, so all of that gets canceled out. But then your two damage goes through, and we'll do a two damage to him. Yep. So that he has four hit point, or uh, yeah, four health. And you've done two, so he's half dead. Okay, let's do it again. Do it again. Do it again. <sighs> nothing. All right. So then yours. Oh. Also well, nothing. So speed three versus his three dodge. Did it again. To cancel Another those two. out, and the two damage will defeat him. So that was just enough. So bye bye, Bodo. Reward. You are going to receive two blood vials. Woo woo. And then he is going to be removed. From that point, then that is your turn. So then it would move over to the enemies to go. So then each one of them is going to activate, and each one will have different parameters or instructions that they must follow. Yep. So first, we'll start with uh, this guy here. So he is going to. If he's within two spaces, he'll move, and then he's going to attack. So his attack is a speed one. It does two damage, and it's going to roll a blue. So your minimum speed rating is a two. two. So he's going to need at least one speed to come up on there for him to even be able to hit you. And he didn't. So basically, the attack failed. Otherwise, you would have also gotten to roll a red and a yellow, plus you would have gotten three dodge, three dodge to, to help you with. And again, you could also activate an ability if it lines up. So, for example, if you would have had those two lined up, you could have spent mm -hmm. a blood vial to get a shield as well. All right, uh, so that was his turn. So then we'll move over to the other guy who is going to basically do the same thing. He'll move up and try to smack you. Now, he has a speed of two. So he's a little quicker. He is also going to roll that, that blue die, so you're going to get your white or your yellow and red as well, because you're definitely going to need some defense. All right, so he rolled an additional speed and a hit. So he's done, he's a speed of three and three hits. So he's going to wipe out your dodge. So then it's going to go straight to. So you got two more, so you're going to eliminate two of the damage, but one will get through, so you're going to take one wound. I have three dodge, five yeah, to five his. Five to his, basically his uh, three speed and three hits. So it'll be six to five, more or less. Three speed. Yeah. But I have two speed, that doesn't negate nothing. Okay. That's the minimum that he has to have in order to be successfully, or it successfully hit you. So he was able to meet that, so then it just goes straight to... And he has how many, you said? Uh, he has uh, two, two hits, base plus the one he rolled there. And I had five dodge. Yes. So you would have canceled out the three speed and two out of the three hits. So only one gets through. Hmm. Well, I thought maybe one of his dodge, uh, his speed would all have, I would have negated two of them, but okay. Yeah. I see what you say. All right, so from there, let's go ahead and show one more turn. So we'll choose one other character to go, and so what do you think? Maybe Otto or Odo? See him lay down the hammer? Mm. Or do you want to go... Well, I was going to say, it looks like Giselle over there has got range and can just stand right there and take hits, right? Take out... Yeah, we could do that and and try that out, and then your character could potentially hold them from moving into True. the space. Yep. So. Yeah, we can do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use her ranged ability. I'm going to go ahead and spend a blood vial onto that. So that's going to give her plus one hit. Yep. She's going to roll a green die against... Um, let's see. I think, I'll, I think I'll try this guy here. This is, he's a little more squishy. He's got a little bit more hit points, though. And squishy. We'll see what happens. Of course he will that. All right, so then I'm going to resolve. So my I have a speed of three, which is going to meet his requirements. Unfortunately, he has all shields, so speed is not going to be obstructed by that, and speed doesn't have any other benefit to it. So if there's extra hmm. speed, nothing else is going to happen. Gotcha. So then it's going to go straight to damage. I did two damage. He has three shields, so he's going to block that. On top of that, because he has three shields, he gets an additional shield, so he would actually add four. So he just laughed at you. So, yes, he did. All right. Why'd um, you pick him for being squishy? <laughs> I thought he was squishy. He apparently wasn't. I'm going to go ahead and try it again. Oh, I, instead of any time you use a blood vial, it's going to be broken, and it'll be added to your broken vial section. And each one of us will have a number next to it, so based on when we get that many blood vials, 
those will be converted to a wound. So blood vials are good to use, but there are some they consequences come at a cost. to it. Yes. All right. Um, I don't know what you think. Should I go after him again, or should I try the other guy? Uh, He's got a little bit better on dice rolls because he'll have the yellow in there, but he doesn't get that extra bonus if yep. he does roll a shield. Uh, go for him. All right. See if I get lucky here. Ho! Oh. All right, so he rolls four dodge. <laughs> and so that's going to take care of my three speed and one of my hits. Then he has two shields. That's going to take care of the hit here and the hit here. So that's a wash. very ineffective on that end of things. Yeah, it okay. wouldn't have worked with the other one either. So then it'll go into the enemy's turn. They're going to obviously try to move towards the active character. I'm going to try to hold them. Range. So when that happens, any character that's in the space can try to keep them in there in that space. Right. So you're going to roll a number of dice based on your agility rating. So that is going to be that. And you are going to need to get a four plus for this one and then a five plus for that one. So we'll go ahead and start. You want the high one or low one first? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I got to read both, roll both for what, each one? Each one, yes. So uh, we'll go with the low one first. Okay, so four better. We'll hold him. All right, so we're good there. And then five or plus to see if we hold the other guy. Hey, there it is. All right, so we were able to hold them, so they're just going to basically hold hang out, out with me and, and party and not be able to do anything. Is neither one of them has a ranged attack at this point. All right, so then it would move back to us, but at this point, we're just going to move on to the next phase. As this is just going to continue until either we're able to eliminate the enemies or they end up eliminating us. In which case, what are, if they if we are able to eliminate the enemies, at least then we'll move into the den phase. And again, you'll have a narrative-driven part of that. So once we complete the path, you'll go ahead and read that narrative, and that's going to kind of tell you what's going on and what you found within the den and that. So we're going to go ahead and set up for that, and then we'll be back to... All right, so we're moving into the third part of this scenario now. So this is the den. So during this particular scenario, we have, we're inside the den now, so we're going to be moving around this building. They, we've had to split into two groups. And so we're going to attack this from different angles. We're trying to make it to this room here to pick up the objective, and then we have to safely get out of the den in order to accomplish this goal. We have a secondary goal where if we're able to eliminate all the vampires in the process, we also get $150 that we can use. Our clock is set to 4 p.m. We keep like we like to go when it's almost dark. I don't know why that is. As, as vampires, we want to go in during the morning, I guess, but we are we are. Because you're leading us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am kind of a vampire. So a couple of uh, important things to point out with this that are a little bit different than some of the other ones that we've had so far. First off, we have combo attacks that we've access to now. So each combo attack is going to have certain requirements that we must meet in order to carry out out. And we will normally have to spend either as a group or collective based on who's performing that combo. We might all both have to spend a number of blood vials or it'll specify otherwise. And then each combo is also going to provide a reward. Sometimes it's a little bit better, sometimes not, but it'll also give us opportunities to do potentially additional damage or other things. The other important thing is that we have Brony in here as well, and he has his harpoon. He is a retired vampire hunter. He doesn't really like going into the den anymore, but he's more than happy to stand outside with his harpoon that he will give to one of our hunters, and we can come back to his area uh, and it's free to move him around as long as one of us is not carrying the harpoon. And he'll allow us to go in and harpoon a vampire and pull them out into the sunlight, eliminating them. Now, of course, he only is available during the daylight hours. Once this converts over to night, uh, he's obviously ceases to be useful because he is retired. And he does not want to work at nighttime. And um, anytime we use the harpoon, it will be returned to the starting location that he's at. So then a hunter has to go back and pick that back up to take it back into the den again. How far can we go in with it? Uh, four zones. After okay. four zones, then it has to be dropped uh, and it'll retract back. So we, we do have some limited range with it, but it definitely can be hand or handy to handle some of those nastier vampires that we might be running into. The other thing is we do have a pair of barricaded windows up there. Again, only useful during the daylight, but if we can break one of those windows 
any vampire in that room will be instantly eliminated. And then up until the point where it goes into the nighttime, vampires will not pass through that room. So that'll help kind of section off different things as well. Isn't there an indicator to determine which one can? Like, I think our melee ones, right? Correct, yes. They will They will list if they can break a window or not. So pretty much just our melee character, or two that focus on melee specifically. Curtain auto. Yeah, I'm going to go and bust those windows. All right, and the other big thing with the den is anytime we move into a new location, you're going to see these uh, question mark tokens they are going to be a spawn point. So the first time you move into a new area that has a question mark token, you'll have to remove that and spawn enemies. So we're going to draw a spawn card and place our vampires. And during the daytime, those vampires enter into play sleeping. So we have an opportunity to potentially eliminate them before they can, uh, they can get to us. Um, so then we'll, we'll take you through that. All right, so it'll move into our turns. So do you want to go in first? Or do you want me to go in first? I don't really. <laughs> I want to go in. I, 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 where, I don't know. You, don't you, know. Can, you can go first. All right. Um, well, uh, who do we send in? I'll go ahead and go with uh, Giselle, and we'll see. She has the harpoon right now, so we might be able to, to take this advantage of that right away. So How did she have that? She just had it. Yeah, I, I took it. He took it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to spawn a card. Oh, so we have a um, Shiva in there. So he is going to be he is going to be location two. So he'll be there. And each one of the areas is going to be numbered with different numbers on that area. So this is considered one area that's broken down into two sections. And each one of those sections will have numbers on it. And then we also have a Gantz, I think. Vasha. Did, or no. Yeah, Vasha. All right. And he's going to be in location three. Again, sleeping. So now that that's done, then it'll go back into my turn. So I spent one action already doing that. My second action, I why not? Let's go ahead and use that harpoon. As that as the, uh, the Shivas are pretty nasty customers. So I'm going to go ahead and use that right away, and so that will drag him out into the daylight. Now he's going to go kicking and screaming, so unfortunately it does wake up at all the vampires that are in that area. And then he will be eliminated, so I'm going to get uh, four blood vials for that. So I'll add those to my area, and then this is going to kick back to this area here. So I think as a free action, then, I'm going to go ahead and move him over to your area and then that'll be placed uh, in the entry place so when you guys could potentially use that and then i think is my last action i'm going to go ahead and take a shot on the vasha there so again uh, i'm going to go ahead and spend a vial to get plus one damage and then i am i have a speed of three his minimum rating is a three so i am going to at least hit him he gets three dodge and a yellow, and I will add a green to my attack. And we'll see what happens here. So I got another hit, and he didn't roll anything, so then we're going to compare results. I have a speed of three. He has three dodge, so that'll eliminate my speed. Then I have one, two, three damage. And he has three hit points, so I will eliminate him. And I get three more blood vials, so we are, I'm almost, we're almost out of blood vials. So I'm just going to throw a die over here, saying that I have five additional. And he is going to be <coughs> one as well. So that will be my hunter's turn. So from there, it would move over to the enemy's turn. If there were any vampires that were up, then they would all resolve their operation or uh, activations uh, to be able to do different things. Hmm. So each one of the vampires, again, kind of like with the creatures, they have two different ways that they're going to activate. The first number is going to list uh, how far they're going to move towards the active hunter if they can make it there. So, for example, the, sh the sh um, Shivas. Shivas, they will, if they're one space away, then they'll activate using that. Otherwise, any vampire that doesn't activate using the first number will use the second number, which is going to have them stalk the different uh, hunters that are out there. And this they will go towards the closest hunter in that situation. So the enemies that are farther away 
are going to slowly move their way in towards us where the enemies that are close to us will move and attack. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so that was my turn. So then the enemies would go, which we don't have any at the moment. So then it would go into our turn again to choose another hunter. Do you want to go or do you want to go with uh, auto? I guess I can go. Okay. All right. So choose whoever you want to step into the darkness. Let's go with Kurt. Okay. All right. So Kurt will move in and we'll reveal a card. So we're going to have a Gan... No. Which one? Rukin. Which is this one. He's going to be in area three, sleeping. We have a Vasha in area one. And another Lucan in area two. All right. Uh, So then it's over to you to continue. So you have two actions remaining. Um, Now, a big thing with the vampires when they're sleeping, uh, they will not get any defensive rolls. So if you're able to do enough damage to them to eliminate them, uh, then they're okay. If you don't, then everything wakes up. So they're easier to kill, but if you fail, there's problems. Uh-huh. Let's see. So what does the root can do? Two defense. Oh, they're not too strong. I will go ahead and attack this one. Okay. While he's sleeping. Um, Before I do so, let me determine how I want to do this. I think I'll just leave it as is, actually. Okay. So, um, the Rukin's got one speed, right? Yep. Uh, Speed rating one, which you have a, you're already having one speed with your... Yeah, so I met, met that. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and spend a blood dye vial also. To get another green, or a TK yep. green dye? Okay. Correct. All right, so there you go. I am... He has no defense. Nope. Come on. Pure damage. Let's just wipe him out. Can I do that? Can I do that? Oh. That's two. Oh, yeah. And you got two more there, so yeah, he is He's done. dead. And you're going to get three blood vials. You can go and go on. Um, I actually have range, sort of, right? I'm within one. That's correct. Yep. Yeah, you could take a shot at something. I can't do the harpoon, right? Because that requires me to take an action to pick up. Um, it's free to pick up, but it's it is a, it's considered melee. So then you'd have to move and move, and then use an action to to use it. Okay, so I will just use my second action. I will go against him for a range as well. Don't forget to convert your blood vial. Sorry, yep. Uh, He's a one, so I have the speed for sure. Okay. And I will go after him, which is one and green. Correct? Yep. All right. Let's show you if I can eliminate him too. Uh, one extra speed. Okay, and one damage, so that's going to be two damage. I think so that's not enough to eliminate him. So you're going to do two damage to him, and then and he's going to wake up. And then the other guys are also wake up. Oh, so close. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. Um, so that was a move, an attack, and an attack. Yep, so that was it. All right, so then the enemies are going to go. Um, the Vasha is going to go first as it's uh, a little bit faster. It has uh, a range of two, so it's going to move into your space. And then it will attack you. It's going to get a blue die. And it does. it's a speed three, one damage. And then you're going to get your defense, so two yellow. Oh, yeah. All right, so we got another speed and a damage. So you're going to, you have speed of, you've got two dodge. 
So you're going to eliminate his speed, then he does two damage to you, but you have the two shields that are going to stop that. It's a wash. Yep. Uh, take that. All right, and then the Vaj- uh, the uh, uh, Rukin is going to move one zone, so it is going to move into your area and attack you. He gets two blues. He has a speed of one, and your rating is one, so he's still going to hit you. He does one damage base plus his roll, and you're going to hit your two yellow. So he gets two blue, Correct. I get two, my two yellow. Yeah, these guys are a little nastier. Ooh. Oh boy. All right, so you got your two dodge, so you're going to cancel out his speed, and then he does four damage. You're going to cancel two of that, so you're going to take two wounds. Oh, ease. Okay. All right. Okay, so then uh, that's all the enemies, so then it'll move back into... Our turns. So, do you want to go with your other hunter, or do you want me to go with mine? Sure, I will go in. Okay. All right. It's Ellie going in. Watch. Let's do this. Okay. I'm gonna pick up the harpoon. Okay. And I think These they're the the Rukin or the Sha. Which ones? Basha's fast. And has a fair amount of dodge, but no shields. Where the the Rukin, Rukin has, has shields. shields. So I guess I'll go with against the Rukin instead. Okay, so the, Run- makes sense. Yeah, the Rukin will be pulled out and burned, and then you'll get three blood vials for that. So I'll just do that. Oh, it's uh, Ellie that you're activating now. <laughs> And then, um, so that was your second action. You got one action left. I guess I'll go against the Vasha for a, yeah, because it, well, I can, it's right back there again, right? Can I pick it back up? Uh, let me double check. Oh, yeah, potentially. But yeah, it looks like it's, it's good. So yeah, you could use, you could pick that harpoon up and go after that uh, Vasha there. I am. Yeah, fair enough. And I attack and yeah. it gets hold on. I goes back in that same spot. Yep. So you that was my final action. Up to six on your die. Yep. And that's all your actions, right? Yep. Okay. Cleared. So room is cleared, and there are no enemies activated at this point. So then it will move back into our turn, and it's uh, just Auto that has to go left. So he's gonna move in for one, two, and I'm gonna move in for three. Oh, okay. So we have uh, a vent as well as we have a corpse in area three. We have a Rukin, Rukin. or the Gantz. I think it's. I think it's a Rukin. That's a Rukin. Yeah. Rukin in area one, and then I do have a Gantz, a Gantz and he is going to activate immediately. So I get a free attack action if I don't eliminate him. Then everything wakes up. So no with, pressure. Yeah, no, not at all. And he has a speed <laughs> rating of three. Auto is slow, so that's that's definitely not good. I get a blue and a green. Uh, yes, sir. thank you. And then what's he get for defense? Um, he gets a yellow. Yep. I have a yellow. Three dodge. Okay. Um, I do have a reroll. I'm going to have to rearrange this, so let me take care of that, because I would have definitely done that at the beginning of the round. So that would let me get one reroll potentially, if I need it. Um, let's see. I will use the hammer, so I'm going to have to roll the black die to see, because it's the hammer is fragile, so it might break by using this. It does get me one speed at least, so I, now I only need two more speeds. And it does do two damage, and it does get me the blue and the green die. Uh, All right, so let's see what happens here. All right, so my weapon did not break, and I've got a ton of hits but no speed. So I'm going to spend the die to reroll the green and see if I can get this speed. And I do not. It's another hit. So, unfortunately, I am going to fail the attack as 
even though I had so much damage to crush him, he's just too fast, and he just zipped around, and I was not able to land that attack. My weapon did not break, though, so that's that's a, a least Of course. Hit. Why would it break? You missed. Yeah. <laughs> So he is going to uh, wake up the rest of the vampires, and that is all my actions. So then the enemies are going to go. So he's going to attack me first. He gets a blue and a green. I will get a... Those are uh, all your actions? Yeah, because I moved one, two, three. Ah, dang it. Yeah. So he's going to go ahead and attack me. And Oof. not too good on his part. I rolled two dodges, and he has a speed of... Two plus three more, so five speed, which my rating is one, so he definitely hits me. But as far as damage is concerned, he didn't roll any extra damage. He has one there, and I have two shields, so I'm good with that. So no damage on that one. Then the Rukin's going to go, so he's going to move in, and he will attack. To one speed, and he's got... Oh, wait, sorry. So he's got a speed of one. I am also very slow, so I'm not going to be dodging that. I get the other blue die. Yep. He has one damage. He's got one damage. Plus, let's see what else he rolls here. Wow. So two blanks. I rolled my two dodge and a shield. So he has a speed of one. I'm going to block that with the dodge. The other dodge will cancel out one of his damage, and I don't even need to use my shields, which I had three of those. So yeah, I was, plenty. I was good. All right, so that was the enemy's activation. That is all of our players' turns. So the clock will move forward one space. So it's five Damn. o'clock. At this point, then we'll go back into our turns. But I think we're going to go ahead and take a few turns off camera. And then we'll be back to see how our, our vampire hunters are doing on their progress towards the objective. All right, so we're back at it after another round. We are closing in on nightfall here. We have one final round before nightfall happens. And uh, we've been pretty successful so far. You were able to get over to the first window and break that, clearing that section of all the vampires. Right. And Otto is going to be in a position where he can potentially break this other window as there's a number of vampires in here right now. So if he gets lucky, he could pull it off and we'll be able to eliminate the vampires in there, leaving just the, the final room for us to deal with. So it'll move into our turn first for the round. So let me go with auto first and let me see if I can clear this window. So I'm going to spend my first action to move, second action to move, and third and final action, I'm going to go ahead and attack that window. I do not want to to, uh, risk not doing this, so I'm going to go ahead and and use my axes. That also can be used to break windows. And it's going to get me a blue and a green, and it does two damage. Right off the bat, i got to make sure i got my reroll ready to go if I need it. I need the, that black die to see if I break the weapon. Hopefully not. And let's find out. I just need one more damage as the window needs three compl- uh, total damage to break. And the axe does two right off the bat. And I got it. Unfortunately, the axe breaks. But I am going to spend a token to re-roll that and hopefully not break my axe. Yes. So I do not yes. break it. And I got the damage that I needed. So this will be flipped over. And all of these vampires are eliminated. So that worked out. All right, uh, that is the end of his turn, as that is all his actions. So then it will move it back to us, as there aren't any enemies to activate at this point. So do you want to go with one of your characters next? Yeah, I go. think I, I'll go with Ellie. Okay. Since I, I'm actually at the corpse, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my actions to explore. Sure. So you're going to flip that corpse over and find out what is it. It's, it's going to be giving 30. Give you 30 gold. Which so I'll just hold here. Your, yep. You're here for now. All right. It's one. Uh, then I'll just move. Okay. Two and three. Okay. Then the enemies would activate. Again, there aren't any, so I'll go next with Giselle. So one, two, and three to get into position there. So that's the end of her turn. And I'll just move Kurt also. One, two, three. Yep. All right, so that will trigger Nightfall. Uh, Yeah. So he is going to be removed. He retires at Nightfall. He doesn't want to be out there at night, so the harpoon is gone at this point. And then we have to immediately flip over all the vampire cards to the night side. And we also have to spawn any enemies that have rooms that have not been revealed yet. So let's go ahead and handle that real quick. So we have a Gans in there that 
would activate. We have a Vasha in area three, and we have a Rukin in area one. So he's up here by the door. Okay, um, from there, then it'll move back into our round to go, but now the vampires are going to activate first. So in order to carry this out, first we have to nominate one of our characters that will be the active hunter for this round, and then the enemies are going to resolve their actions first. So, uh, what do you think? I don't seem so far away. He is pretty far away. <laughs> Maybe him. Okay. All right. So then we'll start with the vampires. So we have the uh, Gantz first. He's probably the fastest. So his area, he is two areas away. So one, two, he is too far away from Otto. So then he's going to use his second thing where he is going to stalk the nearest vampire hunter. So he'll move in here instead. And then we have the Vasha next. So again, two areas too far away from our active hunter. So again, it will move towards our other hunters. And then finally, we have the Rukin, who is going to go. He is also going to move one. Or yeah, he's too far away for that. So then it's a second ability. So he'll move one there that okay all right so then it would go into auto's turn so auto's going to move for one and move for two and he's going to go ahead and go after the the rukin as that ha that enemy has the most defense uh and has a rating of one so he has at least one speed so i'm going to go ahead and use the axe again did i break oh no you didn't you saved it yeah i saved it so we're going to go ahead and see if uh we can do something here all right so it did not break the rukin rolled one dodge so that'll take care of one of the speeds and then i have one two three damage and the rukin has two shields so it's going to take one damage from that and that was my one two three that was my third action uh -huh. actually do we have any combo stuff that we can do here um, actually, I should have Good had dive bomb two too. Though. So let's go ahead and try this. I'm going to do a hold. So the active hunter makes a melee attack on a vampire with an inactive hunter in the same area. So we'll just choose one of our other hunters to assist with this. And then carrying this out, it's going to cost two blood vials. So I'll convert that over, which is going to immediately do a wound to me, as that was past my you requirement. Try the dive bomb, pops uh, possibly. Well, this one's going to add plus two damage to that attack, so that will actually eliminate him completely as he okay. is. So that works out really well with that combo move. And then he is going to be worth three blood vials that we're going to share between the... Oh, uh, with, the, with the hunters. They're going to split it, so... You'll get one, I'll get two. Which one am I in there with? You, uh, it could be any of... Uh, I think well, it's it Ellie. Any, yeah. So Ellie would help. All right, that was the end of his turn. So then we'll go back again, choosing another active hunter to go. So what do you think? You want to go with one of yours or you want to go with... Uh... Let me go ahead and just bring Kurt into the mix too. All right, so first off, the vampires will activate. Yeah. So we have the Gans first, and his rating is a 5+. plus. So I'm going to try to hold him... Do you, do you want me to hold him or do you want me to let him go? Uh, yeah, let's hold him. Okay, so I need a five or better, and I get it. So then it's the Vasha next, who has a rating of four. Vasha's not quite as hard, so do you want him to go through or do you want me to hold him? Might as well just hold him. of a melee character anyways, aren't Yep. You? I'll just say just home because my, my intent is to move into that same pile. Okay, now yeah, give it a try. And yes, he is held, so no effect there. So then it'll go to you to take your turn. So first action. In. Okay. And that's melee. Um, was this a range, wasn't it? Oh, for, uh, flip your disorder. So you know what your weapon does. Yeah, that is uh, range. So you, you could choose to use that first and not move. And that gives you 
Yeah, that'll give you your range. Yep. So let me back him back up. Let's go sure. ahead and do that. All right. So that gives me, if I use one bullet, that would give me an extra attack plus a two speed blue and a green. And it also gives you plus one uh, damage from that too. So you're yeah. doing at least two damage base. Which one are you targeting? They're both speed three, so you're going to need at least one uh, speed on there to be successful. Well, I do have... Oh, wait, I didn't move this around yet. True, but you haven't taken any actions yet either, so you could move it around to get the plus one speed on your... I think I shall do so. ...melee arranged attacks. That way then you're guaranteed and you don't have to worry about it. All right. I'm going to watch that. This is my last file, actually. Okay. So once the action's done, then you'll take a wound from that. Yep. All right. And then he gets, uh, which one did you decide to go after? With the Basha or the, the Gantz? Oh, they're both the same. Um, yeah. I'll go against the Gantz. Okay. So it's just the one yellow then. He only has one hit point. Yeah, you definitely got him. And you did roll a critical on there. Um, so as long as you have a weapon that lines up with your ability, which you do, they're yep. both the same, you would do a critical damage, so one gets through right away, which already is enough to kill him. So he has been eliminated. You will get uh, two blood vials for that. Yippee. Uh, but that also costs us. I, I yeah, might as so well. So you'll convert to take a wound. Yep. And that was your first action, so you still have two actions remaining. Um, I'll move in. Okay. And I will whack him with a melee. All right, and he gets another yellow, and then you're getting a blue. Yep. Hmm. Huh. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, I think he he blocked it or ran away. Oh, yeah, oh. he's, he's going to dodge basically out of the it's way of dances. it. He only had one uh, speed where his rating is a three, so. Yep. It was a dud. All right, so then it's uh, back to us to choose another active hunter, so it'll be between Ellie and uh, Giselle. Giselle. What do you think? Looks like Giselle has a better chance, right? Uh, yeah, she's got two speed at least. Yeah. So yeah, I could go with her. All right. Um, that was supposed to be converted. Okay. So then the uh, Vasha is going to attack. So it's going to do. It's a speed three, one blue, and then I'm going to get my two yellows. And it's a crit and a hit, and it does have a critical rating, so it's going to do one right away. So I'm just going to take one damage from that. And then we'll check our rating. So it's a speed three. Its speed is also, or his speed is three. I have three dodge, so that'll take care of that. I have an additional dodge, which will take care of one damage, and he has one other damage, so I'll take an additional wound. Yikes. So I'm up to four. <sighs> yeah. Um, so that'll finish off his turn, and then sure. it'll move into my turn. So I'm gonna, I have to use a melee attack since I'm in the same space as him. I could try to move out, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and try to hit him with this. Um, both of those are for range. I'll just push him out. I could. Um, take this to get an additional action so I'll get, I think I'll do that so that'll give me four actions this turn I'm gonna go ahead and try to attack him and he gets two yellows Ooh, rolled two dodge but I rolled two hits speed of two unfortunately that is going to fail because I needed at least three speed so then uh, I'll go ahead and attack him again see if I can get him this time I got my speed so I have a speed rating of three. He has three dodge, which will take care of my speed. He got two more dodge for the two hits. So nothing there. So that's my second, third. Yep. And final action. He's a little too quick for me. 
Ooh, I got it this time, and I do one damage to him, so he's got two hit points left. Uh, then it'll be your turn, so he's going to attack you. So he's going to get his blue, you'll get the those. Okay. That'll give me two speed. I need one speed, correct? Oh, no, no, he's attacking you first. Oh, jeez. So, you so you, if you're worried about it, you could take a shield. If you're thinking he's going to roll well. Nah, that's fine. Okay. So he does a crit, so it's going to be a wound to you. And then the rest will be resolved. So you've got a ton of dodge. Yeah, you were you were going to completely wipe shimmy, out everything. Shimmy and jig yeah. all over. It's like, <laughs> Ooh, it's super fast. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so that then it goes to your turn to activate. What, what are you... What's that one? It's a melee. Oh, okay. Uh, wait. He's got a speed of... Three, so you you might have to move. Okay, you're gonna do that. Okay, right. That'll give me two. Yep. I potentially could so do you, something. Yeah, you need to have at least one come up. For that, and he's got. And he won't. He'll roll the two yellow. <sighs> we'll see. He has one dodge. I have a crit. Uh, no, it's a hit and a speed. speed. So that was what you needed. So you That's do two, two hits. damage to him. He is going. He has three, do four dodge. So he's going to wipe out the two. What? Okay, yeah, three, two, two, three speed, and he'll cancel one wound. So you're going to do one wound to him. So he's at two damage at this point. Should I try it again? Mm, might as well. That was pretty successful. Ooh. Oh, is that a no just a regular? So you were successful in hitting him. Unfortunately, he has so many dodges this time, he is going to block that. I right, got one more. Yes, you have one more action. Maybe I should just walk away. <laughs> Two more. And Same thing is, again. Yeah, he's going to block it this time. Because he's got five this time, and you have five as well, basically. Yep. Well, there we go. Yeah, so he's able to live a little bit longer. So at this point, then the clock would move forward, and we would move into another round. Uh, basically, once we eliminate him, all we really need to do is grab the objective and then get out of the, the den. So we're going to go ahead and call it here. And then the final phase we're going to move into is the Elder vampires um basically uh home location so we're gonna go and try boss to see level if we can, yes exactly take care of the elder vampire so we'll finish off with that back in a second all right so we're back at it this is it this is the elder battle we're gonna go up against the elder so this one works a little bit differently why are you so excited <laughs> <laughs> i have a good feeling about this we're, we're vampire hunters um so with each Vampire Elder, they are going to have their own boss cards that are going to trigger and will do different things. Uh, they'll have two attack cards and two defensive cards, at least this particular boss does. And so they don't necessarily have hit points. Instead, they are each one of these cards has a certain number of hit points. And as we eliminate all the hit points on that card, we'll flip it over and that will become inactive. Once we've eliminated all four cards, then the Elder is defeated in that situation. So we have our work cut out for us, and we have different Sorry. ways of approaching it. <laughs> I have armrests. <laughs> you do have armrests. I just found those. So, um, yes, yeah, so that is our goal with that. We both, we're all starting off of the field, and we are in uh, daylight hours right now. So we will actually activate first before the enemies. We also have two of her bodyguards in there that are really nasty customers. The Trogos. So, yeah. So we have to deal with them, too, um, at certain points. All right. So it'll move into our turns first. So who do we want to send in to handle this initially? What do you think? Uh, I'll die first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. All right, who are you going with? Are you going to go with Ellie first? I think I'll go with Ellie. That's okay. my first move. All right. 
Mm. Did you want to rearrange your thing for a particular am style? I am contemplating right now. Okay. Um, I'll add I'll switch this around so that I have extra speed on my range attacks right now. Okay. And let's just go straight for her. The Elder Vampire? Oh. Yeah. Alright. So my second action. Shoot. What do we want to take get rid of here? I'm trying to figure out which one's the most uh well, she has the ability to, when she rolls critical, she'll do a wound. And then she also has, um, when she deals two hunter. or more damage, she is going to heal a wound. Then she has, uh, she gets to add a d6. If she rolls a one, she's going to push the, the hunter away and the, any attack fails completely. And then she also has that one as if she has three or more dodge results, she gets a additional dodge. So right now she always starts with one. So if she gets two dodge on, on the single yellow die, then she'll uh, get an additional dodge. Um, and then if she eliminates a hunter, she will spawn another one of her guardians. That one does what again? That's the critical one. So if she rolls the critical symbol on the blue die, then uh, that's an automatic wound. So that one's that one's pretty nasty. I would say probably one of the top two would be the the uh, nastiest ones. Just pushing the the attacker away is just still just a push, but it also cancels the entire attack. Uh, so not that ones necessarily come up a lot, but let's do. I'm going to go after the crit. Okay, that one only has three hit points, so you yeah. have a better odds of taking So what out. do I need to do here? Um, ranged. Yep. And I need two or better, which I have with the range ready, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you have three. Actually. She's got a dodge, two hits, and a green. She gets that. All right. I believe this is right. Correct, yep. Let's see. All right, so you got an extra hit as well. So she, she got has an extra dodge. Two dodge. So she's going to eliminate two of your speeds. The additional speed isn't going to do anything. Then you do three damage. She has two shields, so you'll, one will get through. So you chose a crit, right? Yep. Okay, so then that's got two hit points left. That's my second action. Let's do it again. All right. Right, she did so you've nothing. Got the two speed, unfortunately, she does have the two uh, shields, so she is going to eliminate the two damage that you would do. Uh, so that one doesn't, uh, she's going to block all of the stuff on that. Dang, nabbit. Yeah. Right. I should have used my item, I forgot. Oh, uh, that's a melee item. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you will the... too after this. <laughs> yep. Here she comes. Yep. So she's going to move in. First, I think they are four to her five. Yeah, she's going to move in first, and she'll attack you. She's going to use her two blue. You're going to get your yellow and red. And she uses speed two, so she is going to connect with you. She does one damage automatically. Or okay. eight damage from her attack. Not, all, not automatically, but... Ooh, she's got some hits there. Got four dodge. Okay. So she's got a speed of four, so she's going to cancel out Nine four of seven the dodge, dodge, plus you got three additional, so then she's got three damage um, that she will that you're going to cancel out from there as well. Well, I just matrixed her. You did. <laughs> so yes, you are good. No damage there. And then these guys are going to activate. So if they're within one range, then they're going to move in and attack. They're not, so they're going to simply move forward. I can move here. And he'll move. He will move up and attack you. So he is going to roll one blue. He's got a speed of four. Oof. To my red and yellow. Yep. Okay, so he does a crit, um, which I don't think his card has the crit symbol. It does not does currently. Not. It will when it goes to nighttime. Shh, not night yet. Yes. So no effect there. He has four speed and 
two successful hits. You've got a speed of seven right now, so you're going to cancel out everything. And he, luckily, he did not get the too much. He didn't get any extra speed. Otherwise, he would have gotten an additional damage. Yep. All right. Matrix uh, that again. So that will finish off the enemy's turn. So then it's back into our turn. Choose another character to go. Um, what do you think? You want to go with somebody else, or you want to go? Uh, you can go. Okay. Makes a little bit more sense to us so you wouldn't get her bouncing back All and right. forth. So I'm going to go with auto next. I'm going to move one, two into her space. And for my last action, I'm going to do a combo uh, hold. Since she, there's an, act, an inactive hunter in there, yep. I'm going to go ahead and spend the two blood vials that I need to do that. And this one's going to give me plus two damage. And then it is a melee, so I'm going to go ahead and take that so that I can re-roll something if I need it. And I'm going to use the axe, so I'm going to get the black. I need one blue. She gets a yellow. And she's also going to roll a number. So I'm going to let you roll that. So go ahead and roll that first to see if this cancels out completely. It does not, so then we're going to resolve the attack itself. All right, so she got one dodge. She has one additional dodge and two shields. So I've got... My speed of 2, which her minimum rating is a 2, so I'm good there. I hit, at least. Uh, the dodges will be canceled out with the speed, and then I've got 2 damage, 3 damage, 4, 5. She has 2 shields, so 3 damage gets through. And I'm going to go ahead and do 1, 2 to eliminate that. Okay. And then I'm also going to do, I think I'll do 1 to that. All right, um, and then she I did not defeat her, so I'm not going to get any blood vials from that attack. All right, so that'll finish off my turn, and then she's going to turn around and retaliate, of course. She doesn't like getting hit like that, so she's going to roll her two blue, and I'm going to get a blue and yellow. Oof, so she did very well. She's been rolling that. Yeah, she's been pretty consistent. So I got two dodge. She has two four speed, so she's going to cancel out the two dodge. She has three hits on there. I do have two shields, so one is going to get through, so I'll take one damage from that. And... Yeah, I think that'll be it for her. Then this guy is going to go... He gets one blue. I'll get my dice here. He got two additional successes, or two additional hits. So he's going to do three hits. I have a dodge, which will be canceled out by his speed. So he's going to do one as well. So that puts me up to four. Yikes. And then the other one is also going to move in and do the same thing. Poor Otto's getting hammered here. Uh, he's got one dodge and two hits. So my shields will soak both of those, so no damage on that. Okay. All right. Um, so then it's back over to us to go. Do you want to go with uh, Kurt or do you want to go with um, Giselle? I'm going to go with Kurt. Okay. Oh, enters one. All right. I was looking at that dive bomb. Dive I think bomb? that dive bomb would be Dog useful. Bomb. Okay, so while a hunter um, grapples a vampire, another hunter leaps in and attacks. So the active hunter is in an area with a vampire, and an inactive hunter is in an adjacent area. So... Disregard that, then. Yeah. So I could go first. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can do that. Okay, so then um, that way then, I'll, then you can use me to, to do this one. So I'm going to go ahead and go, and I'm going to go ahead and use one of these uh, bullets here, and I'm going to take a shot on one of her guardians to try to hopefully potentially get rid of them. So it's a they have a speed minimum speed rating of three. I have my speed rating of three here, and they get their two yellows. Yikes! And um, I will rearrange. So I'm going to spend a blood vial to get plus one damage. Oof. And, all right, so I have a speed of four 
to their defense. So they're going to get two, three, four, five, six dodges. So I have four speed, so that's going to cancel out everything but two that are going to be left. And I have one, two, three, four damage. So two is going to get through, which will do two damage to them. I'm just going to put a die over there. So that was my first. I'm going to go ahead and take another shot. Why not? Let's see if I can finish him off. So I'll just convert to use that again. Hopefully they won't roll quite as many dodges this time. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and spend another vial to re-roll. And I got a damage out of it. All right, so he has... Two dodge, he has so four total. I'm gonna that'll cancel out the speeds and leaving one left over. And then I do four damage. Three are gonna get through, so that'll eliminate him. And I'll get four blood vials for that. So these two will get converted, and then I'll get four for that. Alright, so that will finish off her turn, so then we have to activate enemies. So first off, she's going to try to move. Uh, Ellie, do you want to try to prevent that from happening? Mm. need a five or better. Strategy talk here. Sure. What if I do let her go? Uh, in, because it says inactive adjacent, correct? Yeah, but you have to be in her space. My character will have to be. Yeah. Active right now he's not in yet. With a vampire. Right. So when you move in... I would, take, trigger I would take two actions for me to move into her space. Yeah. Because I was questioning because I have thought this is a melee weapon here mm -hmm. that would trigger that. I don't know. Well, you got Kurt that's going to go. He's the one that would be activating. Right. So I would be moving him in, but the mm -hmm. melee isn't the melee tech of the inactive hunter? Uh, then the inactive hunter is in an adjacent area. The inactive hunter makes a free move into the area and a free melee attack. So yeah, she it might be better to let him go, because then because uh, she's not real strong with the melee attacks. Right, which is where I'm thinking because her yeah. melee attack. Uh, yeah, that could yeah that could be good. We could do that. All right, all right. So, so that's so my we'll thought. I'll let her go. So she's going to attack. She gets the two blue. I'm going to get my two yellow. And nice. we have a crit. So. But the crits have been canceled, so nothing there. She has one hit, two hits, speed two. Uh, I've got two dodge, so only one damage gets through. And then this guy is going to come on in there as well. Or do we want to try to hold him? Let's try to hold him. Would that make sense? Well, if we hold him, then you're going to have to try to... you have to roll to get past him because he's going to try to hold oh, okay. you. Then. I so, see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, it might be better just to let him go. Hopefully... Hopefully this will be too painful for us. Let's say you want to eat your food. <laughs> yeah, might be doing that after this. That's crack. Oh, that was a lot helpful or more helpful. All right, so five dodge. He's got a speed of four. He does two wounds, so one's going to get through. Two, three, four, five. I'm up to six. Yeah, I'm definitely going to want to be popping some health here. Yeah. All right. Um. So that'll finish off the enemies uh, for her turn. So now it's into Kurt's turn to go. All right. So here's my two actions. One, one, two, to be in her spot. Okay. And I'm going to attack and then do the tag team. Is that how that works? Uh, yes. So you'll trigger the tag team. So this is going to be the inactive hunter is going to spend one blood vial. So whoever the inactive hunter is that you're going to activate. Okay. So then the active hunter will get to make a free move action, so that'll bring her into this space, and a free attack action, so now you can use your impaler to do that. All right, so that should give me blue, two greens. And you're, are you targeting the elder? Yes. Okay, so she's going to get a yellow, and she still has the, the die there. Or do you want me to roll it? Roll that, okay. so I can blame you. Of course. <laughs> Oh, it was, it was all, oh, it was right there. All right, let's see. That's a lot of speed. Yep. And does it, okay, it doesn't give you any extra benefit there for this. Is that a free roll, re-roll? All right. Um, 
No, it's a range, a range oh. of one. Gotcha. So, um, so you've got a speed of two, three, four, five. Um, and she has a dodge of two, so she's going to take care of that. She has two shields. You're going to do two damage from that. Unfortunately. That was a waste, huh? Yeah, it didn't work out so well. All right. But, uh, but then I have his attack still, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, you've got a lot of blood vials, so you could do a hold action. You could try the hold combo yep, as well. Let's try that. All right. So the active hunter is going to have to spend two. And then you'll make your uh, melee attack. And you could pop one to get, roll an extra green die. Go ahead. Oh, I canceled it. So no luck there. All right, so you convert your vials. Well, I didn't use anything. It didn't work, right? Uh, you still use them as part of the action. There's another damage, please. Uh, no damage. Okay. There you go. Thanks. All right, and then she's going to attack. Oh. So two blue. And then you're getting your two yellows. Oof. She needed she had what a true speed two. Yeah. So I blocked one. So you're gonna you're gonna defend two and a dodge. So you're gonna take one. And then the other guy's going to attack. He rolls one blue. You'll get your two yellow. Does two damage. Um, but you got your two armor, so you're not gonna. You won't take any damage from that. I dodge two, right? Yep. Yes, yeah, so you're good. Um, all right. So that's everybody, right? We've, we've activated all four characters. Yep. All right, so then the round will tick down. It's round five, and we'll get to start again. But I think at this point we're going to take a couple turns off camera. We'll be back to see how things wrap up and see if we can survive. Yes, <laughs> we're getting we're on the ropes, but not too bad. Not too bad. All right, we're back at it. We've been able to get a little bit more stuff done. We're almost ready to finish off another card here, and we did finish off her other guardian. So it's down to us versus her. We're almost there, and we're ready to move into it. It is a night uh, time now, so we have to choose one of our active hero, or we have to choose our active hero, and then she is going to activate. Mm. What do you think? You want to go, or you want to to go and try to do something with uh, one of mine? <sighs> you got a lot of damage going there. Um. I guess I. Let me see if you can draw her away. Oh no, you want to keep her there, right? Um. Well, I actually, want to... I want to be. I need to have somebody. I want to do a hold, so I'm going to need somebody else in there with me. So either we go and have her move into another space, and then I go with him afterwards to move to move into her space and use that ability, or. Um, Seems to make much sense to maybe try to chain some of those if we can. Yeah. Um, hmm. What we could do is do a dive bomb first, have auto go and do the dive bomb first, bringing another hunter in, mm -hmm. attacking, maybe we'll get lucky, and then other after that, then he can do his hold, since we'll have another guy person in there. Okay. So that could work. What do you think then? Because if we're going in there, it would be a strong melee that we need. Um, You've got the speed, but not the necessary the hits. I've got. Yeah, it might be better for you to go. Yeah. Worse. Like um, because you've got two damage plus a blue die. Okay, we can try it. Okay. Kurt's right. going in. So. Well, well she's got to go first. Yeah, she's going to go first. So 
I'm going to get that, and she is getting a blue two blues. Oof. All right, so that's a lot of damage. And I've got that, so we have speed of four. Let's cancel out the dodge. And then she does three damage. I can take She's attacking me or you? Uh, me, because I'm the active player. Okay. All right, so that'll finish that off. Uh, then the... We'll do the dive bomb. So the inactive hunter has to spend a blood vial. So that'll convert over. And then you're going to get to move in for free and yep. make a free melee attack. So just a blue. Just a blue. And did you want to spend one to get a green? Because you are going to need at least one. Or which one are you using your weapon? Or no, that's, that's a ranged weapon. Yep. So yeah, you'll need at least one speed. You probably want to get, do a, a green. You got your speed. So oh, you got, I got three my speed. speed. And a hit. She has... Three hits. She gets that. So we forgot to roll. <sighs> so she's going to just cancel out your speed. That's It's not going to matter. Then she has two shields. You do three damage. You're going to do one damage to her. So one goes through. And that will finish off that card. All right. And then it goes back to auto to go. And so he's going to go ahead and do the, the hold combo. So this is going to have him spend his last two blood vials. That will convert to another wound. And that puts him up to six. He's still doing okay, though. All right, so that's going to add plus two damage to his attack. He is going to roll... The fragile die, as well as these, and she's gonna roll that. I'm keeping the reroll right, just in case. I don't have any more blood vials, so hopefully, hopefully this will work. We will see. Oof. All right. So nice. So I got a critical hit. I do have the weapon type that I need, so that's one auto damage to her, and then she does get two dodge, so that'll take care of the two speed. Or I don't have any speed. Wait a minute, I don't even hit her. Ooh. Yeah, I needed... Oh, wait, that's up here. So I got one. So I needed one more speed. Yeah, we will. Yeah, I don't have any more blood vials, unfortunately. And that was on a combo, does that... No, it, the com the, the, um, it doesn't give me any extra speed. So gotcha. I needed, needed one more speed to pull it off. Oh, well. All right. So at least I got the, the critical in there. So I, I think that'll still go into effect. Um, so that was my first action or second yeah, second action. So I could swing again and, and maybe I'll get lucky. So I think I'll do that and see if I can maybe do another damage here. I just need, need a little bit more speed here. I got my speed and two damage. All right. So I might have actually done it here. So I got three speed, she's going to block two of that, and then she has two shields, which will take care of that, but two more damage to get through. Bink, bink. And the Elder Vampire has been defeated. Barely? Jeez. <laughs> Man, so, no vials left. Yeah, no, we were running We were running low. We definitely used everything at our disposal. Yeah, I have, yeah. Nope, no but, weapons left. I eat all my food. Yeah, some of our characters are, are pretty close. To Delth, we're definitely going to be spending some money back in the village. Luckily, we got that 150 for clearing out the den because we're going to need it. Yeah. Lots of healing to happen. All right, so that wraps up the video. Hopefully, you found this helpful in deciding whether or not this is a game you want to back on GameFound. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by GameFound's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.